Anyway, welcome to another video. Give me a moment. Anyway, let's get into the what if. Yes, I figured out how to get the little floating ball back. Anyway, if I'm being honest, I have just about run out of original ideas for this, like, week. So if y'all have suggestions, leave them in the comments. Once again, it's a themed week, so the theming lasts until next Monday, which I will be posting the Chaos What If. Yeah, that one's pretty well requested. If any of you all have uh, other suggestions, you know, for things that are not a part of the week, I will uh, hopefully at some point end up doing them, but I will only do them at the end of the week. Once again, because it's a themed week, I put themed week in the titles of my videos so you know when one's going on. So just stick to the theming. This week's theming is control, like Makima, and or Conqueror's Hockey. You know, domination of someone else's will. I realize that it's partial, mostly my fault, because new people can see the videos and not know what's going on, so I'm going to just, whenever themed weeks are around, explain at the beginning of the video. Anyway, yeah, now that I'm finally done, I am going to continue with this what if, you know, done with my rant. Okay, uh, let's get on with the actual what if now. Okay, so we start off with Deku and, well, Eerie walking in, well, the street. Deku would be wearing a suit and look quite calm. Eri would be looking around, somewhat panicked. She would say, y You said that, uh, that the restaurant with the apple pie is here? Why are we walking into this back alley? As well, they would walk into a back alley. Deku would say, Oh, uh, don't worry, dear. Don't worry, Eri Chen. And I'm just gonna say, dear. <laughs> To me, it's less cringy inside, in my opinion, because I ain't Japanese, it ain't my culture, and if something ain't my culture, I'm not comfortable with saying it. I don't know why, it's just... I don't know why. So, yeah. Oh, uh, don't worry, Eerie, my dear. Uh, just needing to deal with a few pests. You know, a few stray cats and dogs. Eri would know what he means by this immediately and, well, clutch to his arm tighter. As well, they would see a few members of the Beast Rejection Cult. Is that their name? I mean, they're so forgettable that the anime literally skipped over them. So, yeah, I think it's the Beast Rejection Cult. Anyway, they would look at Deku, and then Eri, saying that she has a horn. They would all get up, but before they could even react, Deku already has his chains out, shooting at them. He would grab one by the neck and shatter their... Shatter their neck until... Well, crush their neck until their head pops off. And then continue the process with a few goons. You know, looking for one that's half decent and in terms of quirk and also can get a bit of information out of them. One of the members of the Beast Rejection Cult would fire off a fireball utilizing their quirk. Deku would use his chains to, well, create a bit of a wall. No, he would grab one of the end of one of the members of the cult and put them in front of the fireball. They would explode. Guts flying everywhere. As a member of the cult would have snuck behind Deku and grabbed him, saying, <laughs> My quirk's a quirk n is a nullification type. If I touch you, then your quirk stops working. What you gonna do now, big shot? <laughs> so tell me, who's your boss? Who sent you and... Well, maybe if you tell me this and give me the girl to sacrifice... We'll let you live, or at least we'll make your death not painful. Deku would remain completely calm and, will say, in a calm voice, 
while he would put on a set of white gloves before, well, he would speak. <sighs> Looks like the dog managed to get behind me. He would say before the member of, before, well, the grunt could even form a response, Deku would have cut off his hand through a pocket knife that he had and grabbed his and grabbed the chopped off hand, spun around and stabbed it into his neck, killing him. He would fall over and Deku would say, Damn, this was a brand new suit too. Uh, and my gloves. Oh, it's so difficult to get bloodstains out of white. Okay, uh... Deku would look amongst the carnage of the, well, the battle. All caused by a few explosive quarks that Deku used members of the Beast Rejection Cult to block. It appears like I may have gotten a bit carried away. Ah, I'm glad I at least left one alive, hopefully. You would look through the rubble and, well, the corpses and see one still breathing. Oh, great. Ah, Master would be, will be quite pleased. These, well, misinformed individuals have been a thorn in our side for a good few years. Weeks now. Eri, dear, would you mind fetching me a fresh a sh suit and a fresh set of gloves? She would nod and quickly run off to the car and, well, fetch him his clothes. Just saying in this what if, I can barely remember jack shit that happened in the other one, but uh, I already, well, have ideas for this one, which do not ri lie on the previous one. It's more like... An episode of Deku and Iri bonding a bit. Also a bit of flirting, if you get what I mean. Well, yeah, you'll see when the time comes, hopefully, and I don't completely forget about it. But, yeah, I already have most bits of this what I've planned out already. As well, Deku and Iri would quickly walk back into the street, Deku in a fresh suit... And, well, a black set of gloves this time, to avoid suspicion. They would walk out the alley, and, well, as Deku's walking in the street, a certain blonde-haired individual- I can remember little bits of the previous What If, by the way. A certain blue-eyed, blonde-haired individual would notice Eri and Deku, and, well... Notice them passing by, and Deku would just glare at him as they are walking past. Deku not paying him much mind. Well, you know who it is. It's Mirio. Mirio in Sir Night Eye would, well, be walking. Well, we cut to their perspectives. They are just returning from the grocery store. You know, because Sir Night Eye had to do an errand run and Mario offered to help. Anyway, they're returning from said grocery run and they encounter Eri and Deku. Well, they would look. Well, Eri, as soon as she would see Mirio, she would get nervous and quickly look away and, well, begin to sweat a bit. Mirio would, you know, say, Hey, uh, would you happen to be. Y y no, no, you have the wrong person. Eri would quickly respond, trying not to look at him. Holy shit, it's her. He would think to himself, uh, Hey, it's me. Uh, th did this guy hurt you? Eri would quickly say, No, 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 he didn't. He, he didn't. Well, getting closer to Izuku, Izuku would look at Mirio say, and say, can you please not? We're trying to go to a fancy little restaurant. It's a reward, as you could say. He would say, a, thinking to himself and how yesterday Eri had, well, used her quirk a bit on, well, the master, as you could say. 
well, reverting his face a bit, but not fully. But he has recovered a significant amount because of it. Well, yeah. Little day, little by little, Eri's using her quirk on All for One, slowly bringing him closer to that point of when All Might punched off his head. And well, when she... The day inevitably arri arrives when she has enough control over her quirk to fully stop it on a dime. That will be the day that All for One shall rule again, as you could say. As you can guess, Tomura immediately, immediately, is all over Eerie, like they are now best friends. <laughs> well, because of her, well, how she's healing all for one. Anyway, we cut back to my present day, and well, Deku would look at Mario with a, you know, gentle smile and say, well, a slight but noticeable smile and say, Anyway, I don't know what your and little Eerie's here's connections are, but please, would if you would not mind, you know, walking off, disappearing, it would be much appreciated. Mirio would look at Deku, Deku would look at Mirio, and he, Mario would respond with, Fine. As Mirio would walk away, Eerie in a cold sweat, not even willing to look at him. Deku would say, Like I told you, heroes... Heroes are just... Just veils of false promises. He would say... As Eerie and him would walk off, Mirio stopping in his tracks, stopping in his footprints, being like, Oh, shit. Anyway, yeah. So that happens. Deku takes Eerie to the restaurant. Uh, they have a lovely little time there. Eerie stuffs her face in apple pie. There's a cute little moment where she's looking at Deku asking for more, but her face is so stuffed. When she says more, a bunch of little crumbs comes out, and her cheeks are puffed up like she's a... Chipmunk. Deku definitely took a picture of that. He's gonna put it on his wall later. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Give me a moment. Let's continue. So we... Give me a moment. So we cut to you, a. You know, Mina's casually sitting... And while well, reading a book, and, you know, Deku decides to be a bit flirtatious. Man, this video is going to be shorter than usual, but once again, like I have said, I'm running off of low creative juices. You know, for from posting a video every single day for the last week. But don't worry, I've been stuck pa you know what, that's probably why I'm lo low on creative juices. This week I've been stockpiling on what ifs for the end of the week so I can take a break, as you could say. So, yeah, I'm gonna post a few videos like every second day for a few days, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Mina's just sitting there reading a book and Deku decides to be a bit flirtatious. You know, just out of the blue. No particular reason, only to make her... F I, I don't even know at this point, I just feel like doing this. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> oh, why do I have to be so honest? Like, in these videos, I am usually... You know, as honest as a normal person. Okay, this is going off track real fast. <laughs> anyway... Uh, Deku would lean over and, well, say, Hey, Mina. Uh, hey, Zuku. Uh, how are you doing? He would get closer to us and say in a kind of flirtish manner, the most personality she's heard in his voice in years, say, I'm fine. 
How about you? It would say, as before she can even speak, Inkadeku places a finger on her mouth, moves it down, and moves it down, and moves it down, and moves it down to right where her heart is. Like, right this, to the center of her chest. As you would go up again, up again to, well, you know, her collar, as he would wrap his finger around it. And pull, and pull himself in closer to right next to her ear. And say, Oh, I know how you're feeling. I'm not good at flirting, so this is the best you can get from me. This is the best you can get from me. I am a disaster with women. I could try and flirt with a lady and she'll think that I'm trying to ask her uh, to fly to Jupiter and back. <laughs> I could be talking about hay, she could be talking about seaweed. So, yeah, that's the best I got. Mina would turn pink er. And, well, you know, she would blush a bit. Man, this is kind of really just more of a 1.5. Yeah. She would blush significantly as Deku would just pat her on the head and say, Well, it's not happening today. He would say walking off as she is just stunned. Like, Mina.exe is not working. T overload. <laughs> anyway, that's about everything I had. Yeah. A good old 16, 17 ish minutes of me rambling. Man, this was just. Yeah, this is definitely a 1.5. Anyway, goodbye, my lovely, lovely audience. I hope you all enjoyed. I know I did. Um. Uh, Man, this fi making a 15 minute long, 17 minute long video now feels so short now. Anyway, goodbye, my lovely, lovely audience. I hope you had a great time, and uh, bye bye. Man.